is like dope 16 kind of man just crossed both um it's gave the the mc that uh let's just say necessarily couldn't go to a studio dope 16 gave them a platform to basically do their thing um where you had the artists where they was dope in the the studio you know what i'm saying the mixtape pretty much uh bridged the great gap for them um the dope thing about that was like the Step Into the Bad Side series was all independent music at first, all right, at first. So the first three or four volumes of it, it was all independent music. Um, <clears throat> it, it, it solidified me, you know what I'm saying? Because the whole, the whole objective is us, we're using each other at the end of the day. All right, I need you for your music. You need me for my platform because my thing is other DJs respect other DJs at the end of the day. And that's what people got to understand, well, especially as artists. So if I'm a, <clears throat> excuse me, so if I'm a, a DJ and I come to Deuce for an example and I'm just like, hey, Deuce, I got this record, all right? Deuce is going to be more open to listen and play this record than an artist that he does not know coming to him with that same approach or whatever, all right? So think about it. If I'm a DJ, Obviously, the streets is going to believe, all right, you being a DJ, you obviously know what we want. A DJ is going to respect me to be like, hey, all right, you a DJ, so I'm pretty much for sure you're not going to feed us no BS. So it just build a bond between both the artists and the DJs. Um, let me see. Back in the days, I'm going to say this. Louisville's independent scene used to be phenomenal, all right? There was a, and I'm a part of the machine that was the problem. I'm, I'm not even going to lie to you because back in the days, man, we didn't have social media uh, where at a click of a button we could reach millions of people. So you had to rely on stuff like uh, your local radio station to, you know what I'm saying, help push artists through. Um, that 10-year black ball that the radio station had on independent artists, it hurt. You know what I'm saying? Uh, especially my generation, when you had people like the – the Harris Seasons, the Daddy O's, uh, the KDs, the Goodfellas. You had the uh, the Brickster franchise. You had the uh, the D Freshes. You had the, I mean, the list goes on. The Shiz. You had the the um, YG the '80s babies, man. The uh, man, just a conglomerate of artists that was here in the city that shoulda had situations. But one of the main tools that we needed back in the days in order to get that situation didn't necessarily have our back. You know what I'm saying? So when you look at the people that was, let's just say, that was really making stuff pop late 90s, early 2000s, when you strip that away from them, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, what could we do? You know what I mean? And I mean, shout out to the Kim Cam DJs and even the Allegiance, because those panels and uh, stuff that we used to bring to the city that's where you would get most of your information from. You know what I'm saying? Um, but one thing that I think was missing out of all of this was, um, man, I'm probably gonna get in a lot of trouble for saying what I'm saying, but I don't give a, I don't care. Um, uh, what people gotta understand, man, it's the music business, first of all, all right? And with that being said, man, and I know I'm probably going off the, uh, going off the, I'm going off the topic right now, but I just feel like this need to be heard. Just remember, it's 10% talent, 90% business, all right? And when you talk about business, man, you have to understand, if you're an artist, no matter how dope you are, all right? And this is even today's world. No matter how dope you are, that money is what's going to make you move and shake. So my thing is, if you're an artist and you do not have your own bag, or if you're an artist and you do not have somebody to fund things for you, a sponsor, whatever it's called, to endorse your black ass, or whatever ass, whatever color your ass is, it's a wrap. Stop chasing it. Remember this. There are so many different branches in the music industry, all right? 
Why does everybody chase the limelight for it? You know what I'm saying? I used to rap. I stopped rapping because I ain't have nothing to rap about. You know what I'm saying? But I could DJ. You know what I'm saying? And guess what? I can sit here and say I pay my bills doing what I love. You know what I mean? So to everybody that's out there, and it's all about how big you dream. So I could be like, man, I want to DJ and I want to make the same money that uh, Lil Baby makes, uh, Jay-Z makes. Yeah, of course I want that. But what I can say is I do what I love and I probably make a salary of somebody that works at a nice corporate job. You know what I'm saying? So I pay my bills doing what I love while I'm watching a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, chasing this dream that everybody's chasing. You know what I'm saying? There's only, I can say in Kentucky, and it's supposed to be, what, in Louisville, in the metro area, it's supposed to be like almost a million of us. You know what I'm saying? All right, so you would say there's, what, probably 100 DJs? You know what I'm saying? All right, but there's 100,000 rappers. You know what I mean? I got a better chance of surviving over here being a DJ. Or, matter of fact, imagine how much you can survive being an A&R. Imagine how much you can survive, you know what I'm saying, being a producer, being a songwriter, you know what I'm saying, and all this other stuff. And people got to understand the hip-hop tree has so many branches. Look at my hands. This is, I don't know why I'm doing this. But the hip-hop industry has so many different branches. Pick one of those branches and lock in and go and get it. You know what I'm saying? But it's, let me go back to what we said, my bad. I just went on a rant. Um, all I'm saying is um, the DJs, and the artist is disconnected today, all right? And it's simply because I feel like DJs don't feel like they need the artist. And then the artists feel like they don't need the DJs. You know what I'm saying? And some form of fashion is kind of true. You know what I mean? And just a small form of fashion. You know what I'm saying? And I'm saying that because uh, artists, you got to look at it like this. If you're putting your music out on all these streaming platforms, you're not only competing with people that's in your backyard. You're competing with the Drakes. You're competing with the little babies, the babies, the Megan the Stallions, and all that other stuff. So when y'all are now in this pool that y'all are putting y'all music into now, you know what I'm saying? And y'all looking at it like, man, I'm just going against this person in my backyard. You're not anymore, all right? And that's what it's got to register to people. But one thing you got to look at it like, one thing that a DJ can do for you is promote your music when you are not there. You know what I'm saying? All right, so imagine you got this record that's going crazy. You got five DJs in five different spots DJing to a collective of 20,000 people. You know what I'm saying? And they're all running your record? Bro, that's free advertising for you. So to all you artists that's looking at DJs like, ah, you can't do nothing for me, actually we can. And matter of fact, when we believe in something, we go a whole lot harder for those records. And y'all got to realize who is the... Who's in power when it comes to making these connections that y'all want? You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people don't know, DJ Cam is the music director of the Allegiance. The Allegiance, what, it's over 60 DJs? At a click of a button, guess what? He can send your music out to every DJ, uh, most of the big DJs in this market. You know what I'm saying? There's a resource right there. That's some G-A-M-E for you right there. You know what I'm saying? Y'all should, should be in Cam's DMs right now. You know what I mean? Um, but I do think, um, us as a DJ crew, you know what I'm saying? The Allegiance, uh, we let down the city a little bit too. You know what I'm saying? We went away from the, the things where people would get educated from, you know what I'm saying? But it's coming back. You see me looking at the camera. It's coming back though. It's coming back. Um, uh, so the conferences, get ready for those. You know what I'm saying? The award show, it's a dope platform, but the thing about it, we're giving awards away from stuff that people are already done. You know what I'm saying? By that time, it's too late. You know what I mean? Like, you need to holler at some of these influences that's in your city. You know what I'm saying? John Wu, good resource. Lil D, good resource. Any other DJs, good resource. Anybody that you see moving around, it's a good resource. Man, talk to them in the same way that I put myself together. Like, I'm Voltron right now. I done took bits and pieces out of all these DJ niggas and put it in myself, pause, all right? And so that's what you gotta do is just take game from everybody and figure out a plan to make it work for yourself. That's it, you know what I'm saying? Like the music game is worse than the streets if you ask me. The music game is by far way worse than the streets because you got, you got your toughest guy in the streets being an artist that usually if somebody takes $10 from them they ready to do something to that person. But yet the music industry, we see these people rob these people for millions. 
for millions, millions, and they don't do nothing to these people. You know what I'm saying? This is the game that y'all feel like chasing? Look at these bags under my eyes, man. I'm not even on a high level with it. But I only, psh, we can't go to sleep, bro, because we got to figure out what's the next trend, what's the next uh, thing that's going viral. You know what I'm saying? What is kids bopping to? What is grown-ups bopping to? And then what is everybody bopping to? You know what I'm saying? We got to figure all that out. Man, Deuce, ask another question because I'm going crazy. I'm going crazy. Do it, do it. I'm going crazy, man. Man, MP3 Wax, let me say that too. Um, what was we a part of? Was it the Midwest? It was the Kip Kip DJs before it became the Allegiance. But no, 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 no. It was another one that me and you was a part of with Drizzle. Oh, the Hitman DJs. The Hitman DJs. DJs. All right. So it's a couple of conglomerates put together. You know what I'm saying? Um, now, I will say the Allegiance. I'm always going to be a Monster Squad person. You know what I'm saying? Are we active right now? Nah, but that's family. Love everybody over to death. Uh, core DJs, MP3 Wax, all right? So I will say the Allegiance, MP3 Wax, and Core DJs are my main three um, um, coalitions. Um, so the reason is the Allegiance is home. These are my brothers and sisters that I get to touch every day. I get to see every day. I can make a phone call and some stuff is going to shift. I can make a phone call and some stuff is going to shake. You know what I'm saying? I know these people got my back. Um, and we cornered this market, period. You know what I mean? Biggest DJ coalition probably uh, in the Midwest. I'm just going to claim it. You know what I'm saying? We'll put our DJs against any of y'all DJ crews. And even the ones that's in our backyard. You know what I mean? No disrespect to y'all, but... We'll smash you. Um, also, when it comes to the core DJs, you know what I'm saying? That's my big family right there. You know what I mean? Um, it's worldwide. One of the biggest DJ coalitions in the city. Um, I get to see these brothers and sisters probably four times a year through uh, conferences, DJ uh, conferences that we do and throughout the country. You know what I'm saying? And, like, that's the fam right there. Uh, MP3 Wax, uh, what's so dope about that is also it's a real big family uh, throughout the country. Uh, they break a lot of new music, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, a lot of love over there. Um, I like what Chris is doing, you know what I'm saying? Just getting everybody together, having everybody move for a unit. Now, you might ask yourself, why am I dealing with these three? So, core DJs, like I said, it's my worldwide family, you know what I'm saying? That covers the planet, ladies and gentlemen, all right? MP3 Wax, that's my country. When I talk about a country, I'm talking about United States. It's my United States family, you know what I'm saying? Core DJs, MP3 Wax, I know for anything. If anybody deals with fraternities, sororities, if you deal with a square, you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm saying? Like anything that you deal with a, a game, Whenever you move around, the best thing possible is to know that you are good in whatever market that you at or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to core DJs, when it comes to, matter of fact, all three of them, if any of my family is in those markets, I know that I'm good. But the one that dearest to my heart is the allegiance because these are the people that I see every day. Uh, with me being a president, man, I'm hoping that I can guide these brothers and sisters to the right direction because like when you in a when you in a leadership role um and when you representing something like uh when it comes to the radio station uh, there's a lot of things that people don't see me do out in public and it's for a reason i represent too many brands you know what i'm saying if anything happens to me it's not going to be i right, tony it's not going to be dj empty beats it's not going to be, you know what I'm saying, DJ EB is in trouble. What's it going to be is B96.5's DJ Empty Beats done did this. You know what I'm saying? All right, if I'm drunk, remind you, I don't drink at all. And this is the reason why, because I represent too many brands. You know what I'm saying? So the worst thing I can do is have myself in public looking crazy or looking wild or having any of these organizations looking dumb because of me. So that's one thing that I just refuse to do. So, you know what I'm saying? Just being in these leadership roles, 
And you know what I'm saying? Like, just, I wear that shit on my chest, you feel me? So I feel like wherever I go, if you see it on me, and even, even if you don't see it on me, man, I represent that. And I want us to, you know what I'm saying, be good representation out here. Uh, back then, new music, and I mean, I think nothing has really changed when it comes, well, no, nah, let me t stop that right there. Uh, back in the days, man, DJs, uh, we had pools. Uh, we still have pools that exist right now. The only thing about it is, uh, there's a new wave that's happening right now. Remind you, music, y'all remember when Napster dropped, CDs disappeared, vinyl done disappeared, cassette tapes done disappeared, we're watching CDs disappear. What's next is the MP3 is disappearing, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, as you can see, if you're a DJ, uh, they are starting to offer all these platforms that you can tap into, the title, the beat source, and all that other stuff. Because um, um, back in the days where DJs used to get together and we used to exchange music amongst each other, uh, or uh, you would be in a DJ pool, they will send you a bunch of records, you take what record you want out of there, and you'll send what you didn't want back. And then you had these MP3 pools where uh, stuff like Franchise Record Pool, DJ City, uh, BPM Supreme. Um, those are probably the three biggest ones that I probably use or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And this is pretty much a service that you pay monthly. And you can go in there. They usually have clean, dirty, intro, intro, outro, acapella, instrumental versions. And everything that a 12-inch a, a record used to be back in the days is now digital. So now what you are starting to see is... When you go to some of these um, uh, record pools, music that you want to be there is not there. You know what I'm saying? Or they're getting it too late. And that's simply because uh, when it comes to um, what we DJing on, like I said, you see the title service, the B source service, and they want you to stream everything pretty much. You know what I'm saying? And this way they can calculate everything that we're pretty much doing. So it's, a, it's a, a revenue grab for the labels because if you think about it, if I got an MP3 and I'm playing it in the club, uh, the only people that know that I played that was the people that was there, me and my computer. Where now, if you're telling me I got to stream this music from a streaming platform, every time that I run it, you know what I'm saying, it registered to that artist. So it's kind of like a gift and a curse because now um, artists is going to probably see more royalties from... Um, uh, DJs playing a record, but uh, what kills it is um, everybody has access to these crazy libraries. And I think that's one thing that used to separate uh, us as DJs because there was things that Deuce had that I wouldn't have. There's things that I have that Deuce wouldn't have. And you know what I'm saying? And that's what separated us as DJs. You know what I'm saying? To where now, um, when you sit there and somebody's like, hey, Matter of fact, they can be like this yes, and just wake up and be like, you know what? I want to be a DJ today. They offer that service, and then all of a sudden, my whole library that I've worked for for 15 years, you know what I'm saying? Um, DJ Dick and the Buns got it now. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's wild. Well, see, yeah, um, I think what is dope, man, I'm starting to see a lot of, um, of the young DJs, they like uh, doing mashups. I think it's dope taking an acapella, instrumental, you know what I'm saying, putting it together. But the thing about it, man, what people got to re realize is um, the record labels want as much money as they can possibly get, all right? So uh, just a current event. Uh, matter of fact, let's go back to Lil Wayne's squad for an example, man, where he used to just kill just any beat, you know what I'm saying? Now, the thing about it, think about it if you're an artist, and we've seen this in the past where you had something like uh, LMA's booed up, and then Jack Queez did a version or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And Jack Queez, I ain't gonna say he killed it better than she did, cause he definitely didn't, but he was starting to get a little bit more uh, legs on his record than she was. So think about it. Why would I release these instrumentals when I could be scared that somebody could just come out of nowhere and remake my song, and then next thing you know, we losing out on money, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's literally why um, some of these record labels stop releasing um, the acapellas, the instrumentals. Um, and now all they pretty much give us is a clean and dirty. You know what I mean? Um, but one thing that I do just to stay ahead of the curve and how to make myself different is I might play the song different. You know what I'm saying? So instead of 
um, like back at ass up for an example, instead of starting straight out at the doom, 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 girl, you working with some eh, eh, you know what I'm saying? Like I might just organize the song differently and jump to certain parts of the song to play it different because this is what I tell every DJ that I, uh, that I even rock with. We all have the same music, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> how can you play it different? That's it. President is the 